Hello and welcome to Mickeyology, where we take Disney a little too seriously. I'm Austin Rathal, and today we're looking at the brand new Disney Plus series, Renegade Nell. This show tells the story of Nell Jackson, an 18th century English girl who's forced to become a highway robber after corrupt noblemen frame her for a crime she didn't commit. Lucky for her, she has a fairy guardian who can grant her superpowers, which allows her to kick the butt of any toff who would dare to harm her. Now, I just streamed the first three episodes of the show, and I highly recommend it. However, you should know that this is a period piece, and while the show draws on some fascinating events from English history, it doesn't stop to explain that history to the audience. Now, you don't need to be an expert historian to enjoy the show, but if you don't have at least a little background information, then parts of the show can feel a bit disorienting, especially if you're not British. So let's review the real history behind Renegade Nell now so that you can start streaming the show without worrying about having to Google certain events and characters. Here are five things you should know about the real history behind Disney's Renegade Nell. The show begins in Tottenham, England in 1705. This was a turbulent time in English history. It had only been 40 years since the Great Plague struck the country, killing roughly 100,000 people. Fleas carried the disease from place to place, often on the backs of rats, but not always. Flea-ridden cloth arrived in the village of Eam in August 1665, and once the villagers realized that the disease had struck their town, they courageously closed the town off from the rest of the world. The villagers refused to leave and posted signs around their village warning outsiders to stay away. Now their selfless sacrifice saved countless lives, but 80% of Eam's people fell victim to the plague. Even after the plague subsided, life wasn't comfortable for most commoners. The upper class people known as the gentry owned 50% of England's land. Meanwhile, the bottom 40% of the nation's population owned only 14% of the nation's wealth. Life was even worse for blacks because England had a thriving slave trade, which built wealth on the backs of Africans, often by forcing them to go to raise crops in the American colonies. The laws for this unequal society came from Parliament, which of course included the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Members of the House of Lords were noblemen, known as peers of the realm. Now these men were powerful, but they didn't govern England alone. <laughs> Leading the government, of course, was the English monarch, and in 1705, she was still quite new to the throne. Her name was Queen Anne. She'd ascended to the throne in 1702 when her brother-in-law, William III, died. She was married to Prince George of Denmark, who was unpopular with the nobles and didn't speak English very well. Anne herself was small and in very poor health. She'd endured multiple miscarriages and she suffered from gout, a disease that causes severe joint pain. By 1705, she even struggled to walk, and she had a war on her hands. In 1700, the King of Spain died without an heir. You wouldn't know it looking at his portrait, but he was actually the product of lots and lots of inbreeding, which made him sterile. After he died, two candidates for the Spanish throne emerged. Archduke Charles, son of the Holy Roman Emperor, and Philip of Anjou, grandson of the King of France. If the throne went to Philip, that would mean the union of France and Spain. That was an idea which scared and angered the rest of Europe. So, France, Spain, and Bavaria teamed up, the Holy Roman Empire, England, Holland, and some other countries also teamed up, and they set out to settle the question of succession the way all civilized countries do, by sending hundreds of their people out to kill each other. It was called the War of the Spanish Succession, and in 1705 it was already in its fifth year. However, England and its allies had just scored a major victory in that war. In August 1704, they took on the French and Bavarians at the Battle of Blenheim and won. That victory even knocked Bavaria out of the war altogether. However, it also cost England and her allies 12,000 casualties. Hundreds of Englishmen who had taken the Queen's shilling ended up dying on that Bavarian battlefield, making their wives back home into widows. <laughs> As if a foreign war wasn't enough, England was also experiencing a crime wave at home. 
Robbers known as highwaymen were holding up travelers on the roads leading in and out of London. Highwaymen ordered their victims to stand and deliver, meaning stop and hand over your valuables. Some highwaymen wore masks to disguise themselves, others just hid their face with scarves. Some highwaymen behaved like gallant gentlemen even while robbing their victims blind. Most highwaymen weren't so genteel though. Highwaymen often worked in gangs. That way they could rob a large group without being overpowered. After all, only someone with superhuman strength could hope to rob an entire coach full of people on their own. With a gang, however, highwaymen could keep guns aimed at all travelers at all times, making sure everyone cooperated. Speaking of guns, the highwayman's weapon of choice was a flintlock pistol. A highwayman could hold his pistol in one hand and hold the reins of his horse in the other. Each flintlock had only one shot though, so highwaymen would often carry multiple loaded pistols on their bodies. Although it could only fire once at a time, the flintlock was still a serious weapon. A shot from a flintlock could not only send a metal ball right through your body, but could also plunge fibers from your dirty clothes into your wound, causing you to die from infection even if the ball itself didn't kill you. Most highwaymen were, of course, men, but the press did offer tantalizing tales of highway women who dressed like men and robbed travelers in the same style as their male counterparts. These stories were often scandalous, cautionary tales in which the unladylike robbers wound up paying for their crimes in the end. Some highway women would become more than just names in a newspaper, though. Some became legends, like notorious cross-dressing thief Mary Frith, aka Mall Cutpurse, and noblewoman termed highway woman Catherine Ferrers, aka the Wicked Lady. These women eventually became characters in plays and films, and may have even inspired the creators of Renegade Nell to create the show's title character. Now, Englanders didn't just delight in tales of highway robbery, they also loved folktales. Some folktales included famous characters, like Billy Blind. He was a fairy who appeared in Scottish ballads. Legend said that he was a domestic spirit who would help around the house, keep married couples and families happy, and offer good advice. He was even known to tell people how to undo evil enchantments. Not all characters from folklore were helpful, however. Some were sinister, like Hearn the Hunter. It was said that in life, Hearn was a royal huntsman, but he'd fallen out of favor with the king and the king dismissed him, which led Hearn to hang himself from an oak tree. After that, his spirit haunted the forest of Windsor. It was said that Hearn would reappear whenever a national crisis was at hand, and he was easy to recognize. He had great horns upon his head, chains upon his body, and he rode upon a black horse. Anyone who encountered Hearn the Hunter would be wise to fear for their lives, for while Hearn was an undead spirit, he'd been known to kill the living. To survive a direct encounter with Hearn the Hunter, you'd need to be some kind of superhero. So there you have it. That is all the history that you need to know to start streaming Renegade Nell. Please let me know in the comments if you've seen the show yet, what you thought of it, and if you found this video helpful. Please don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss another video. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.